In the next segment, we're going to actually listen and observe a Doppler auscultation of the joint. So once we've finished our palpation of the joint, we've palpated lateral pole, we've palpated retrodiscal tissue, we now can answer the question, is there inflammation in any of those tissues, the capsule, the synovial membrane, the retrodiscal tissues? Inflammation is a sign of an actual ongoing problem. The next question we want to be able to answer is, where is the disc? We want to answer it in two ways. Where is it at lateral pole or in translation? Where is it at medial pole or rotation and or intercuspal position? So translation tells us about lateral pole. Intercuspal position and rotation tell us about medial pole. We're going to answer the question, where is the disc, with a thorough joint history and understanding the patient's joint sounds. So one of the reasons we are so curious about joint sounds is it helps us answer that question, where is the disc? Now the only definitive way to answer that question is with MRI imaging. But listening to the joint, actually figuring out palpable joint sounds, pops and clicks, and more importantly, the only kind of joint sounds that we can auscultate, which are crepitus, is a very important piece of answering that question. I'm going to go ahead and go through the demo with the actual sound from the Doppler for, for you once with Shelly. What I want you to try to do is differentiate between the background noise. One of the hardest things about a Doppler is background noise differentiation and have that be different from when we actually hear crepitus. So I'm going to go through it the first time and just let you listen. Then we're going to talk about it and then I will actually have the Doppler video play again so you can listen more specifically. <laughs> Open and close three times fast. Perfect. Now open a quarter inch and close. And a quarter inch and close. And open as wide as you can and close. And open as wide as you can and close. And move your bottom jaw toward me and back. And away from me and back. Toward me one more time and back. And away from me. And back. Perfect. Thank you, Shelly. So now that you've heard the Doppler video, I want to talk to you about what was occurring, and then we're going to play it again, and I'm going to ask you to listen for these things. So Shelly has a lateral pole disc displacement without reduction, meaning she doesn't pop and click. So in a joint history, if you asked her, do you pop and click, she'd say no, but she would be able to tell you she used to have a pop and a click. If you actually did palpable joint noises, so when you have your fingers over the lateral pole and you have her open and closed several times, you would not feel anything. So you might mistakenly think that the disc is fully in place anatomically. If you actually now observe the Doppler video, what you're going to observe is that there is definitely background noise. The very first thing that I do is I locate the superficial temporal artery. I then actually have Shelly open and close three times fast after redirecting the Doppler so that I'm away from the arterial flow sounds so that I know I'm at the place I can maximally hear the joint movement. I then isolate rotation and translation. Rotation is the first quarter inch of opening, and if you listen carefully, you'll hear it's quiet except for the background noise. Translation is the rest of the opening past a quarter inch, and if you listen, you will hear crepitus or increased noise beyond the background noise. I also can have her move her lower jaw toward me or a working side movement, and that's quiet. Versus when I have her move away from me, away from me, a balancing or non-working movement into translation, you'll hear crepitus. When she moves her mandible toward me or a working side movement, you're going to hear that it's quiet except for the background noise. <laughs> Open and close three times fast. Perfect. Now open a quarter inch and close. And a quarter inch and close. And open as wide as you can and close. And open as wide as you can and close. And move your bottom jaw toward me and back. And away from me and back. Toward me one more time and back. And away from me. And back. Perfect. Thank you, Shelly. 
So I hope you were able in that last run through of the Doppler to hear that and differentiate the sounds at medial pole and lateral pole. And I would encourage you to go back and watch that part of the video again um, because the more you listen to it, there is definitely a learning curve to it. But being able to differentiate those sounds is going to be important. Now you can also do this with a stethoscope, with a high quality stethoscope, not a $30 CVS or drugstore type, but a true couple hundred dollar medical stethoscope. And then there also is technology called JVA or joint vibration analysis, which can be used to help us figure out based on noises or sounds where the disc is. And the other piece of that is I'd encourage that you watch the video on understanding joint sounds to hopefully give you a better visual picture of what's happening, medial pole, lateral pole, during the specific movements of the temporomandibular joint.